I'm just going to tap this animation tab and the tabs can really be set up however you want. But usually I like this two screen view over here being the camera view. So I'm going to hit Z and then hit rendered. So this is the camera view. If it doesn't show it, just hit zero and it should go to your camera view. Now in this one, usually I'll hit one. You can see if it looks like this, this is perspective. So I'm going to tap this little grid to go to orthographic. So I'm going to go to this little camera. See where it says device. This should be GPU for me. It might be different on depending on what you're using, but if you're using a PC, you most likely want to be on GPU. Let's see. If we go to denoise, use GPU. So we want to make sure that we have that selected. And the only other thing that I like to play around with is color management. So I'll scroll down and change this to Kronos. And usually that's a, not, a, a lot prettier of a scene. The colors really pop. So you can sort of play around with that. Sometimes I'll go to standard, but I'll change the look to medium high contrast. That also looks pretty nice. So you can choose whatever one works better for you. Okay, so if we look over here to our scene. So this is everything that uh, we really have here. I'm going to add a new collection. And this collection is where I'm going to put Ghosty. Okay, so I'll take all of this and just put him in here. So now I have that uh, organized. I'll add another scene and call this lighting. So now we can just take this light and add it in here. So now we have something in the lighting. Okay, so now we have this collection is the camera and the cube. So the cube is the floor. So let's make a new one and just call it background. So if there's things we want to put in the background, we can just put them in here. So we'll take the cube, put it in background. There's got to be a way to reorganize these. It always bugs me that I, I can't reorganize them how I want. Sort alphabetically. If I turn that off, can now can I? Okay. Cameras. Okay. So this is a little bit more organized so I know where everything is. Let's do the lighting. So here's our first light. It's kind of shining down. Uh, nothing too spectacular, but it's fine. So I'm going to hit Shift A and add another light, an area light. And then let's tap this little menu to pop out here. And we'll just use the gizmo to move this light up. So now we have an area and we have a uh, light. So let's change this one. Let's change the name to key. Let's change area to overhead. Okay, let's turn off key. So you want to turn off both of these. Okay, so now we're on overhead. And even if I turn this off, you can still see that it's not completely dark. So what I want to do is go to the world here. So go to this little icon and I'm just going to turn this all the way down to zero. This way it's completely black. That way you can see your lights. So I'll turn back on overhead. Okay. That's this light here. I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger. I'm going to change it in the settings. So I'm going to go down to this little light bulb and I will change it to from square to rectangle. I'll make it a little bigger like so. I'm going to change the power to 200. It's a little, it's a little bright. Okay. Oh. Let's try to move it and just see what it looks like. Looks nice. Let's hit shift a and let's add a mesh. Let's add a plane. Now I'm going to hit S and make it as big as this little background here or the floor. Okay. So here's our plane. Let's bring this into the background collection. Let's take this cube and let's just get rid of it. So let's just hit X. Let's hit one so we can just make sure that his feet are lined up. Looks like they are. So now with this plane, I'm going to make, we're going to extend this line up to make like a backdrop. So I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to go to this little edge right here. Uh, sometimes I can't do it because of my recording software. So I'll go to this little edge. 
and we just want to select this one edge here. Hit E, and you can see that you can extend it out, but we're going to hit Z, and now it just goes up and down. So that's what we want. We'll just put it up. So now we want to tap on this edge again. Hit Control B for bevel. Okay, so now you can bevel. So just scroll, and then you can use your scroll wheel to add pieces like this. Okay, I think that looks pretty nice. So this is the same thing as if you were to grab the edge and then go to this bevel option. Okay, so now I'm going to hit tab again. And I'm just going to stretch this. I'm going to stretch it so that it fills our frame. And then we have a nice background for our character. Okay, make sure you save. You can rename it to whatever you want. So I'm just going to save. Okay, so now tab goes into edit mode and object mode. So there's certain things that you have to be in either or. So keep an eye up here. I'm going to try to say when I'm going back and forth, but keep an eye up here. If you get stuck, it may just be because I'm in edit mode versus object mode. So back in object mode, right click on the background and hit shade smooth. And you will see that it kind of shades, shades it, make it makes it look nice. So if we want to change the color or adjust the background, just click on it, go down here to these options, and then you can hit new. So this adds a new material. I'm going to call it, I'll just call it white for now. And here in base color is where you can adjust any of the colors that you want. It's kind of nice. And obviously you can adjust them, the metallic, you can adjust the roughness, things like that. You can make it really shiny, uh, whatever you'd like. But I think that looks fine. Okay, so now we have this one light. We have another light. Let's just see how it looks. It's a little bright, uh, but we'll leave it on. We'll tap on it. So you can tap on the light or the word key. And I'm just going to rotate it. I'm going to hit three just to go to the side view. You'll get used to using the shortcuts. Um, you can press the numbers and kind of see where it takes the camera. And those are, those are your shortcuts. I'll move it up a little bit. I'm going to move it back. And maybe I'll make it a similar color to the background. So I'll tap this color here. So remember we're in these lighting settings. I'll tap this color and I'll just make it maybe similar to the background. Looks nice. All right. And let's add another light. So I'll do shift a, we'll go down to light and maybe we'll add, let's add another area light. So we'll move it over up and we'll point it to our character this way. And maybe we'll just move this one a little bit more in front. Rotate. I'm going to change it to a rectangle and make it about a hundred. As you can see, that's actually pretty bright. Now I want to move this light straight back, but you can see the gizmo, the gizmo won't let me. So what I'll do is I'll go here and then go to local. So orientation is default. I'll go to local. So now it's local to the light. So now I can move it directly back. And that actually looks pretty nice. Uh, so one thing I love to do is turn off some of these lights just to see how they look with uh, certain lights versus other lights. So I'll turn all these off. So sometimes you can get some really cool, uh, some really cool looks just by playing with the lights. Okay, I think the overhead is a little bright. So maybe I'll just move it up a little bit. I could always move it back some or forward. And you 
you can also move it left and right. Okay. You can also change the colors of the lights if you wanted. So that's another cool thing you can do. Actually, it looks, it looks a little better, I think, with that light. Maybe I'll take this one and put it to 200. Maybe 150. Okay, that looks nice. So of course you can change all of the materials and colors. You can go to each of these options and then just go to the materials tab. And here you can change the colors. You can see that it says color attribute, but if you tap on it and you just go to RGB, it will erase the information that we brought in from Nomad and you can change the color. So if I hit RGB, it's going to erase that info. And now I have this kind of blank slate so I could color it anything that I wanted. I'm going to hit control Z just to go back to my Nomad color. And you can really have fun if you download Blender Kit and go to materials. So then you have a ton of materials that you can work from. Just go down to categories and you have a ton of categories. So shout out to Blender Kit. I use them all the time. You can make really cool looking materials for your characters. So our scene is looking quite nice. I think I might just change this to maybe a gray color. Make it look a little more realistic, kinda. I think that looks nice. I think it looks pretty cool. So the next thing I'll do, the next thing I'll do, so we're here in uh, the render settings, and I probably could have done this in the beginning. I definitely should have done this in the beginning. I'm gonna go to the max samples and change this to 300. I'll go down to the render tab and max samples and I'll change this to, uh, we can do 350. So now I'm gonna go to this little printer. So these, these are the render settings and I do 1920 is f by 1080 is fine, but I'm gonna change it to 4K. So I'm gonna go up here and just change this to 4K. So you can see that this is increased here. The next thing I wanna do is go back into the scene and make sure none of the lights are like this. If something looks like this, then you can see it in the viewport, which is what we're seeing now, but it won't render. And the opposite is true as well. If this is off, but this is on, you won't see it in the render, but you will see that light. Um, you won't see it in the viewport, but you will see it in the render. So you want to make sure that both of these um, icons are both on or off. Okay, we'll do a quick save. So let's go back to our camera. So the last little cool thing that I want to show you is setting the the, the focus or the uh, depth of field. So we go to the camera, we go to the camera options. You can see that we're in perspective. Oh, that might make things a little difficult, but it's fine. We'll scroll all the way down to depth of field. So let's tap that. And there's a cool way to control the depth of field. So we'll hit shift A. We're going to go empty and we're going to go circle. So let's move the circle up. I'm going to hit three so I can see the side view. Let me scoot this out of the way. So this is just an empty of a circle, which is just kind of like a placeholder. So there's different shapes of placeholders. So we're going to use the circle. So I'm hitting three to see the side view and I'm going to line it right up with these eyes. I'll hit S and scale it down. Not that that's a big deal. So this is going to be our focus point. You can move this and the camera will focus on it. So we'll go back to the camera, back to the camera settings. We go down to depth of field. So depth of field is when one thing is in focus and all the backgrounds nice and blurry kind of thing. So we want to do focus distance, see focus on object. Uh, we'll leave focus distance alone for now. Forget I mentioned it. We'll go focus on object. We'll tap the little eyedropper and then we will tap 
the object empty. Boom, so it says empty. And let's actually change that. So let's want to select this and let's just name it focus ring. So if you go back to the camera, it should be changed now to focus ring. And let's take the F stop and just scroll it down. C point one, you can see it's very, very blurred. It's a little too much. So we'll go up to point five. Looks pretty good. So we'll do a quick save and that looks great. So the next thing we do is want to export a render. All the lighting, everything looks good. Camera looks good. Our sculpt here looks pretty good. The only other thing I might do is put some lights behind it. But for now, I think this is nice. So let's go to render, render image. Now, if this winds up taking too long, then you might have to exit and go back to 1920 by 1080. Uh, you can do that. That might help your, uh, your speed of render. Sometimes it'll take a very long time, uh, depending on your device. Okay. There we go. That looks pretty good. You can zoom in some nice details there. So yeah, it looks cute. So we'll go ahead and save. I'm going to save this to my Mac and we'll call it ghosty one. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We can hit X. So there's lots more that you can do with this character, but I want to try to keep it simple and just go over uh, how I would light it just to make a, a nice, cool render. So this is a great way to just step up your game with your Nomad Sculpts. You can drop them in and then do a nice Cycles render in Blender. It's, it's truly night and day. And don't forget, you can add as many lights as you want. You can just do so much in Blender. Uh, it's really going to take things up a notch. So the next video, I am going to teach you how to do a turntable. So we're just going to do a simple 3D turntable in Blender. So that'll be the next video. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to go more in depth, then definitely check out my Skillshare classes where I am a top teacher. I have about 50 classes, both Procreate and Nomad Sculpt. I also have a few classes on Udemy. So if you want to learn more or you just like my style, you like the way I teach, you want to support me, those are some other places that you can do it. Thanks again. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video.